my name is Annette Cluett. Obviously, I, based on the slide, I'm with Red Hat. Have been involved um, for the last six years integrating storage solutions into OpenShift. And today, I um, want to talk about the sort of latest thing that I've been doing and that Red Hat's been doing, which is to look at multi-cluster multi disaster recovery for applications. So, ooh, okay, didn't, all right. So we'll start off with a problem statement, look at what the Red Hat solutions are, and then talk about some technical assets. Right after that, we'll quickly go to a, uh, a video. Demo, a demo that I did is a video. Um, so the first thing is, Disaster recovery in, for, for applications is not new, right? I mean, if you've been with a financial institution, healthcare, any of those other uh, companies as I have, you know that you have to have disaster recovery planning. And in some cases, you have to show that you have that plan in some amount of detail, even to have the application available. So it's not new, but when we move it into containerized platforms, it becomes sort of, there's not a good solution right now. The CNCF, from my vantage point, um, doesn't have uh, a, a good uh, solution yet, and we need it, we need it today. So Red Hat, along with IBM, has come up with, um, I think, what is at least a good start, and we need to move it into the CNCF. So the first thing is, the challenge is, how do we take OpenShift and containerize and meet the requirements of our legacy disaster recovery. Another concern is how do we trust it, right? So it's one thing to test it, it's another to know that it's gonna be there when you need it. The third thing is it's a combination of products. Red Hat has different cycles of release and all these products have to come together. So the benefits obviously are if we can get it to work, we can get something that's easy, automated, and can actually, uh, very little human intervention, make it happen. So I'm gonna move on, because it takes a while to uh, do the, the demo. So in disaster recovery, and this is not again new, we have two measurements. Sometimes we come up with these measurements with no idea that they can be met. <laughs> so, this is actually bringing the two ideas together, which is you should be able to test that you can meet your both recovery point objective and your recovery time objective. One of them is a measure of how much data you're willing to lose on a per application level, and the other one is how long can an application be unavailable. So in the past, this has been maybe measured in hours or sometimes days. Um, we want to measure it in minutes, and we want it maybe single digit minutes. So uh, the, again, these are not new, but this is how, um, and, and for, for this solution, how we're going to be able to measure it. So Red Hat, along with IBM, over the last two years, has been developing two solutions. Uh, one we call regional disaster recovery, the other is metro disaster recovery. Regional disaster recovery is the idea that we're doing asynchronous replication on the persistent data. So it has no requirements about how close or how far the sites are apart. Metro is meant to be a synchronous solution. Therefore, you could have recovery point objective, data loss equal to zero. So the way that we get there on these two solutions is using components from Red Hat uh, advanced cluster management, the upstream is called uh, Open Cluster Management, OCM. Uh, uh, Red Hat, uh, OpenShift Data Foundation, that's the product that I've been involved with uh, for the last five or six years. It's going to bring along all of the disaster recovery operators that I'll go through in a minute here. And then at the center of this is Red Hat Self Storage, which is the storage, software defined storage that's going to actually do the replication, store the data, and um, keep track of it. So continuing with the components, and again, these are uh, brought along with OpenShift Data Foundation. So we have three new operators. 
One is um, the, the DR hub operator. The DR hub operator's job, and it does live on a hub. So conceptually, I'll show you in a minute, but this is a three cluster solution. Um, or a three location solution. It can be two location solution. But the, the hub operator is really the, the one that has the custom resources to actually do the DR placement and fail over an application. The, the cluster operator is in concert with the hub operator and the multi-cluster orchestrator sets up all of the required mirroring and, and replication. This does require, from a subscription point of view, an advanced entitlement for uh, OpenShift Data Foundation. So architectural, um, if we look at it, we have a global traffic manager. That is not part of the solution. Uh, you do need to have your own geo load balancing or load balancing to plug into this. It's not any different than any other load balancing. Uh, if the application is active, on cluster one and we want to fail over to cluster two. Once the application is live on cluster two, geo load balancing needs to re redirect the, the inbound connections. So you see there's no distance limitation and we've got asynchronous replication. I show it in the here in, in going in one direction, but you need to think of it, or the way to think of it is it's per application. So we could have an application on, on the left-hand side that is being replicated and has a, a failover cluster on the right hand, but we could have another application in cluster two where its failover cluster is cluster one. So it's, it really allows you, as long as you keep enough headroom, to use both clusters and not have just one sitting there idle. So again, no distance limitation. Contrast with Metro, Metro, um, still has two OpenShift clusters, then you can have more. All this is done in peers. So if I had 100 clusters that I wanted to put into disaster or protect applications, I could divide them into uh, basically 50, which would be two sets. E each one has two clusters. So right now it's, it's everything has a peer cluster. So it's, you're either on the preferred cluster or you're on the failover cluster. Really important to this solution, is an external Ceph storage that is stretched, it's called stretch mode, that will basically provide storage. So you have two replicas of the data on one side, two on the other side. So if you lose it, then you have the ability to recover the data synchronously. So there's no, you get no data loss. You still have to move the application over. Important here is also the idea that there's a monitor node. A monitor is a service of Ceph. So somewhere you need to have a, a fifth monitor, so if you need to make quorum, that is not going to go down at data center one or two. So some technical assets that we have here. Um, maybe some of you have seen, I've done quite a few Red Hat office hours. The, the three there that are part one, part two, part three is my uh, colleague, Daniel Parkas. He did a great job in this last month um, explaining in great detail how to set up Ceph in a stretch mode, how to connect it into two open shifts, and all the details of that. So that, that's a really good set. I've also done uh, multiple videos over time. These are links to a few of them, um, recent ones I've done. And then if you want to get into the details, um, the actual documentation, which I personally uh, helped with, so I can tell you it's on basis of documentation. It's pretty good documentation. <laughs> um, but uh, so those are, are uh, assets that you can take a look at. So let's go, if I can figure out how to do this, let's go. There we go. So we're gonna do a little uh, video action here. I would have liked to do it live, but it's three clusters and the chances of everything working out are not good. So um, getting started here, oop. So what I've done, if I can get this thing to go away, what I've done is I've installed Pacman on uh, using uh, advanced cluster management and right now um, it's the Pacman application. I'm going to play the game because the, the reason I want to play it is so that I can create some persistent storage. 
So in this case, I want to lose super quick. And um, I'm able to do that just by putting myself in the right position. And as soon as I lose, um, I get a high score. And I'm going to save that high score to the persistent data that is on the, what we'll call the preferred cluster. And it showed it in the other one. I think it was BOS1. So now we've we installed an application. We created some persistent data. And now what we want to do is to be able to look at failing over to the failover cluster. So in, this is um, your ACM console, if you've seen it. This is actually the multi-cluster uh, console. And we have a new thing called create DR policy. So again, this DR policy is backed by the operators I showed you and the custom resources. So I'm going to name my, my DR policy informative, because if I had a whole bunch of clusters, I need to know what does this policy apply to. So it applies to these two clusters. And then I would like a replication interval of two minutes. I can choose whatever I want, and I can have the same two clusters can have multiple replication intervals. So after that, I'm going to go down. As soon as I choose the two clusters, it goes out and it, try, it looks to see, are these two separate um, OpenShift Data Foundation or SAF clusters, or are they the same cluster? And the async is grayed out, so it's actually figured out that this is two different clusters, storage clusters, and it's going to be an asynchronous relationship. Now I need to, the default is five minutes, but I'm going to change my sync interval, which means all my persistent data, the delta data, will be replicated every two minutes. So now I have a data policy, but I don't have any application. So I'm going to apply it to my Pacman application. As soon as I do that, it's going to create the, the data, uh, the disaster recovery um, resources into the namespace for Pacman. There's a DR placement control, the placement rule, and a placement decision. So let's now go, um, and we, we now, now that we've got everything set up, we want to initiate a failover. So this today is a, a um, it can actually be done by a developer, the initiation, because it is namespace scoped. The actual creation of the data policies, though, would need to be cluster admin right now. So I'm going to go into the DR hub. So important about this is I'm doing the failover on the hub cluster. So if I had lost communication with one of my clusters, I would still be able to fail over the application. So this, so the hub cluster currently is on a third OpenShift cluster. In the future, we're going to be able to do hub recovery, and we'll be able to do two locations and recover ACM. So we're going to add a few uh, parameters. Once you add these, they stick in this DRPC. Again, this is namespace scoped. So this, this data, our disaster recovery placement control, is specific to this namespace and actually this volume. We could have multiple DRPCs based on different volumes. So, and a volume would be, you know, a, an image of the storage that you're replicating. So I'm going to go ahead. As soon as I hit failover, I've changed the status now. And I can go and look in the uh, events to see. And we'll see that things are happening. Failing over. And uh, a VRG is a volume replication group, another uh, custom resource. So we can also watch it here, look close in the middle. It says BOS1. And shortly, shortly there, it switched over. So, and actually I didn't video magic this. So it actually switched that fast. Again, in my test environment, I don't have a lot of latency, but we can see now that it's on BOS2. So that's, so, so basically what we've seen here is an example. Now what we want to do is see is, is the application still working? Also, here's my global traffic manager, HA proxy, and you can see on the bottom it switched over to BOS2. So this, and the inbound connections now are coming into the second or the failover cluster. So let's refresh the application on the new cluster and go down to our high score, and voila, there it is, and we have preserved. So the, the, 
the persistent data was replicated via storage clusters, and then the, the application was rehydrated via ACM and a GitHub. So thank you.